Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out here today. Like you just said, I'm here to talk to you today about loneliness, its long-lasting effects, how COVID has created a loneliness epidemic, how society perpetuates loneliness, and most importantly, how to cope with it. I, like I'm sure many of you have, struggle with loneliness in my life, but not just regular old loneliness. I'm talking about extreme, don't know how to get out of bed loneliness. And a lot of that was due to COVID. For me, COVID took over my last year and a half of high school, all the activities I was a part of, and everything I've been looking forward to since middle school. Prom, homecoming, senior night, all of it was gone in an instant. I was separated from all of my friends in high school. At the same time, I was going through a friend breakup with a toxic friendship that I was trying to leave. And due to all of that, I felt really lonely. Everything felt bleak. Nothing seemed to be going right in my life. And it was at this point I decided that I needed to take things into my own hands and find a way to cope with loneliness. I think that what I've learned the past couple of years is very important for everyone else to know as well, especially if you're going through the same thing or you know someone who is. I know that today we are restarting the conversation, but I believe that I am opening a conversation about loneliness that is not nearly talked about enough. So, like I just said, I'm not the only person struggling with loneliness. A study done at Harvard in October of 2020 led by Richard Weisbord found that there had been a 10% increase in feelings of extreme loneliness from four weeks before the pandemic to six months after the shutdowns began. It was 61% of those aged 18 to 25 that were reporting these feelings of extreme loneliness. This extreme loneliness was described as feeling lonely frequently, all the time, or almost all the time. And loneliness also leads to serious health problems if it's long term. The study done at Brown, led by Professor Callie Thomas, found that loneliness can lead to serious problems such as artery disease, um, stroke, difficulty doing simple life ta tasks, sorry, <laughs> or an early death. They also found that depression has not followed, depression rates have not followed previous traumatic events. Previous traumatic events such as Hurricane Ike and the Ebola outbreak, the depression levels found that they, were, they peaked after the start of the event and they would lower over time. But the COVID depression levels have not followed this trend as previous events have. So if you're like me, you might be asking, why is this affecting young people more than other generations? You'd think it'd be the older generation, since they're the ones who aren't interacting with people online as much, and they're the ones who are getting out less than young people. It's actually because young people are in a critical transition of life, transferring from the family they were born into to a, fam to a found family, whether that be a group of friends, a work family, or a romantic partner. And having a pandemic right in the middle of this critical transition has made it much more difficult to do smoothly. It's more difficult to find a romantic partner. It's more difficult to meet friends. And sometimes people during COVID aren't even going to work in person. I was inspired to speak on this topic not only because of my experiences as a young person facing loneliness, but also because of an article by Neha Gajwani titled, No, You Don't Need to Go to Holiday Parties if You Feel Lonely. It's kind of a long title, I know. In this article, Gajwani talked about how there seems to be an idea that to be a happy, fulfilled person, you have to constantly be going out, partying, and celebrating. But this is unfortunately just not true. It'd be easy if it was, but it's not. <laughs> For Gajwani, they constantly were trying to go out to holiday parties, like the title says, and were trying to make themselves feel better. But they learned quickly that they did not feel better, as they were in the presence of all these people who didn't know or understand them in any way. I faced the same thing. In high school before the pandemic, I tried my hardest at every event I went to, but I found that most often I felt like no one really wanted me there, or that no one understood me and that I just wasn't fitting in with the people that I was trying to fit in with. And I'm sure like many other people, young people are usually told, you're young, just go out and make some friends. This is actually the worst thing that I was told, and I'm sure that many other people have been told. Because of COVID especially, it's so difficult to meet new people. And it's not really a cure-all to just go out and meet people. Because loneliness doesn't just stem from not knowing people or not having a ton of close friends. Like I've said before, it usually means that you're just not known or understood, or you feel like no one is trying to know or understand you. Richard Weisbord said, when you feel like you're trying hard but no one else is trying hard, you withdraw. And that increases your anxiety about social situations. Like that says, it's kind of a vicious cycle. You feel lonely, society tells you to just go out and socialize, you try that, it doesn't work, and then you don't want to do it anymore, and you just build up those walls around yourself. In Gajwani's article, they also talk about happiness, and how 
Being sad is, it makes you seem like you're a burden, that everyone should just be happy, especially young people. Because media shows young people just going out, partying, and everything being happy and fine and okay. But for a lot of people, that just doesn't work for them. Because happiness is not a goal that can be reached. Happiness is something that comes in moments, and that's not what is shown in media. If happiness is your goal, you're never going to fully reach it. Because if it's something that you are trying to reach, it'll just mute what it actually feels like when it's real. I feel most happy when I'm skating around by myself at my college, <laughs> or when I'm just laughing with my friends over something dumb. But when I'm out at a party with a bunch of random people, I am not at my happiest. So let's talk about some coping strategies. In Gajwani's article, the first thing they talked about for coping was volunteering in something that's important to you. And I know that with COVID, it's difficult to volunteer in something consistently. But I think it's not, it's not just about volunteering per se. It's just about being involved in something that is important to you and that you think is doing good in the world. That might just be something simple like going for, for promotion in your job that will make you feel better about yourself. Getting an A in the class you were nervous about. Mostly just pouring time into something that you think will improve your life or someone else's life. Before the pandemic, for me, that was getting involved in my church's preschool program. I helped out with the preschoolers and I sang songs with them and I played with them and it was a simple once a week, two hour thing. But it really helped improve my self-esteem because I knew that I was doing right by these little kids. And I was doing right by myself by increasing my responsibility and maturity. Along with this, I also got heavily involved in my school's music program. I really dove into it, went to every event, helped plan them out, and I had made some friends along the way. Unfortunately, because of COVID, I was never able to go back and volunteer, and the music program was never the same. And I felt lost. But with all this extra time, I decided that I was going to hit, go for a promotion to my fast food job. And it ended up being a really amazing thing. It took several months of training, but I got there. I became a leader and I grew into skills that I didn't even know I had previously. I made amazing friends at my job. Some, I'm even friends with them today. I really grew in this job and it made me feel so much better about myself because I knew that I was becoming a more mature adult because of it. The next step that Gajwani talked about is finding a hobby that also makes you proud of yourself in the same way that volunteering would. The most important part of this is being able to do something that helps you enjoy your own company, so that you might not even need the company of others as much as you thought you would. During COVID, when I had all my, my entire school for the entire year was online, I was a senior, and I couldn't do anything. The classes that I was so excited for, especially my choir classes, were completely online. I didn't see any point in trying to sing along or trying to learn from it. We were never going to perform these songs. So most of the time, I just kind of sat in my room and let the class go on without me. I felt very burnt out because I had had creative resource for years that was suddenly gone. Because of this, I decided to try and get into baking. I always enjoyed it as a kid, mostly just making box brownie mix with my mom. But then I decided to really challenge myself and try to do things that were really intricate, mostly really big cheesecakes or huge lunches for my brother and I. And it became really important to me as well. Not only was I making food for my family, people I love, I was doing something that was turning my stress and anxiety to something beautiful and good and delicious. It helped me enjoy my own company because I really had time to think through my thoughts and to settle. Not only that, but it helped me to really focus on the exact moment that I was in rather than the future I was terrified of. The Harvard Gazette wrote about the Unlonely Project, which is a project that strives to help lonely people and ease the pain of loneliness. They wrote that creating, creating forces one to focus on the moment that they're in rather than the future. That's exactly what happened to me. So how do we stop loneliness? Because we don't, really. But there are things we can do as individuals and as a society that can help lonely people, or if you're lonely, help yourself. As individuals, the first thing we can do is to help people by just being an open, warm person to talk to. Ask people how they're doing and be genuine about it. People can tell when you're just saying, how are you, but with no real feelings behind it. That's the first step. The next thing is what we can do as a society. I think we should push our workplaces, churches, schools, school districts to really get into. Workplaces, churches, and schools should be well adapted to recognizing loneliness and sadness in their students, their employees, whoever they are above. 
We should be making sure that children in schools have an adult to talk to, whether that be a parent at home, a sibling, or a teacher at the school, so that they have someone to go to if something goes wrong, if they feel lonely, or if they need help with something. We should be making sure that people in retirement homes and nursing homes that usually get overlooked in the conversation with depression and loneliness, we should be making sure that they're getting the help they need as well. If you're someone who is struggling with loneliness, but you don't necessarily have the time to get into a new volunteering job or work on you know, getting a new promotion, or you don't have time to get into a hobby, there's also smaller things you can do as well, just to help yourself. These are things I also utilize without even realizing that I was doing it. The first is removing negativity from your life. That might come in the form of removing a toxic person or simply just being kinder to yourself. For me, this came in the form of really working on my skincare routine and also, as I mentioned before, getting out of a toxic friendship, which really helped me blossom and grow. Another thing you can do is being thankful for the current life you have. If you're really proud of the job you're in or the school you're going to, be thankful for that. If you're really happy that you're living with your family, be thankful for that. If you're proud that you got away from your family, be thankful for that. Another huge thing is getting into a routine. This can, if you don't like routines, then that's fine. But for many people, getting into a fun, familiar routine where you are seeing the same people you can build a relationship with is a huge thing. And that worked as well for me when I went to college. I was really nervous about college, especially because I wasn't going to be in my same routine. But I made sure that I got, I met with the same people that I became really close friends with, and that I felt good about where I was and what I was doing. As I just mentioned, I was really nervous about going to college. I was no longer going to have a kitchen to cook in anymore. I wasn't going to be going to my fast food job anymore. And I wasn't going to see my close friends anymore. All those things that had helped me really pull through the pandemic and be on a high note. I was so scared that I wasn't going to have my friends at home anymore because so I was moving five hours away to go to school. I was so afraid that no one would like me at college or that I wouldn't fit in. But I was able to take what I had learned from my previous experiences and put it into my new life that I was trying to build. I took what I learned from my fast food job and I made sure that I used my new um, ideas and talked to people about it. I told people about working at my fast food job. They love hearing about you know, Karen stories and everything like that. Everyone does. Um, and I took what I learned from having a hobby and I made sure that I, have, I had a creative outlet. I rejoined choir and I got to sing again. I got to make music again. And although it was still masked and social distance, we got to put on an in-person concert, which was truly amazing and healing for my young self. So what should you take from this? If you're someone who's struggling with loneliness and you feel like there's no way out, I want you to know that there is. There's simple things you can do. Simply getting a hobby, working on upward mobility, being thankful for your life, and on and on and on. There's so many things. You can cope with loneliness. You can make it better. And if you're someone who's not struggling with loneliness and you want to help, just ask people how they're doing and be genuine about it. Thank you so much for listening. This is an absolute pleasure.